The grieving of a family and a community faced with the unbearable image of a mother and her two children buried in one coffin. There was not enough money to buy three. Here in Nigeria, around 5,000 English-speaking Cameroonian refugees took part in the funeral of eight members of the same family. They are believed to have died of carbon dioxide poisoning. Barnabas's wife is one of the victims. He tells us that most had just arrived in the area of Ecom from Cameroon after fleeing fighting in their villages. It was because of this problem of Cameroon that most of them, they joined us here. They were just living here with me, the entire family. I'm so sorry that God who brought them to this world actually they turned them back. Not far away, on the other side of the border, the victim's home village is now controlled by Cameroonian soldiers. Eight months ago, Daddy was secessionist stronghold. Today, most locals are gone. The army suspected many of being accomplices of armed separatists. The village is deserted because the inhabitants are accomplices. If they were innocent, they could have given us information about the secessionist fighters. Now they are gone. We even want them to come back, but they don't want to. But fighting between the military and separatists continues, and it is too dangerous for refugees in Nigeria to return. 80% of those living in camps like these are women and children. The Aya Foundation is one of the few Cameroonian NGOs offering aid to traumatized people. The first and second visits were not easy. The gun trauma, the burning of the house is a trauma. That trauma was so fresh in them. You could not even see a beam of smile. But now you can see around, the children are really smiling and they are happy. The Anglophone crisis continues to escalate in the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon. Every day, more people arrive in Nigeria having fled violent turmoil. For the most part, their futures remain precarious.